Hello, I'm Sergeant Patel. In this video, we will be showing you how to use a binocular indirect ophthalmoscope, or BIO. The main use of a BIO is to perform a fundus examination. It allows the user to see a wide stereoscopic field of view, or 3D view, of the back of the eye. When scleral indentation is used, you can also get quick and dynamic views of the far periphery of the retina. This is important in patients complaining of flashes or floaters who may have developed a retinal tear as well as premature babies for judging the stage of retinopathy or prematurity. Another big benefit of the BIO is that it allows a good view of the retina despite media opacity such as corneal scarring, cataract or even blood in the vitreous. It is also mobile and easy to carry around. It can therefore be used to examine patients with poor mobility such as patients who are wheelchair bound or bed bound. For less cooperative patients such as babies and young children, you can usually still get a good idea of the back of the eye, if it's healthy or not, with a brief view. Place the BIO on your head, making sure it's comfortable and secure so that it does not move when you're examining. You can see us adjusting it here. Turn the light on and check that the beam is aligned with your line of sight, so you're able to see your thumb singly at arm's length and it's in the centre of each eye's field of view. Adjust the brightness to suit the examination you are about to perform. In babies, it's best to start with the lowest illumination, then gradually increase until you can see enough detail without causing disturbance to the child. In adults, start with the medium brightness and spot size. You need to use a condensing lens to see the fundus with the BIO. There are different powers of lenses, with the most commonly used is 20 adapters, 28 or 30. Different lenses create different fields of view and consequently different degrees of magnification as illustrated here. Like with any patient examination, ensure you wash your hands and are wearing appropriate PPE. Explain to the patient that you'll be examining the back of the eye and that the bright light may be uncomfortable. Make sure that they're happy to proceed and answer any questions they may have. Dilate the patient's pupils to enable a full fundus view. Topical anaesthetic can also be used to ensure the patient is comfortable during the examination. The patient should be examined ideally lying supine or in a reclining chair. Examining a baby may be challenging and you should consider using oral sucrose before the examination, swaddling the child, instilling local anaesthetic drops or using a speculum to facilitate a thorough examination. When the patient is dilated, the room should be dimly lit to maximise contrast. For this video we will be keeping the lights on. You should examine the patient in a quiet environment to allow a comfortable examination. Stand at the head of the patient. Adjust the bed or chair height to ensure both you and the patient are comfortable. Angle the light source towards the patient's eye and examine the red reflex. Then use a condensing lens to bring the posterior pole into view. You can gently rest your hand on the patient's forehead for stability. Ensure that the patient's eye is in line with your light source and condensing lens. You will have to move the lens to bring the fundus into focus. It takes practice to keep the fundus in view and to become comfortable finding the working distance of the lens. You should be aware that different lenses and patients will have different working distances. It's important to have the BIO condensing lens and the area of retina to be examined all aligned. If you see shadows on the edge of your view, it may mean that one of these are incorrectly aligned. To avoid unwanted glare, you can try tilting the lens as this may help to eliminate this. Bring the posterior pole into view. You should examine the optic disc and the macula. Adjust the brightness according to the quality of view and patient comfort. On initial examination, the light will be very bright for the patient and this will settle once the retina is bleached in all four quadrants. To view the peripheral retina, Change the angulation by asking the patient to look in the direction of the area to be examined. You can move around the bed and tilt your body to view the peripheral fundus. To see the superior and inferior fundus, you may find it easier to stand at the temporal side of the patient as shown here. Again, this skill takes practice. You may find you keep losing your view. This is likely due to incorrect alignment of the BIO condensing lens and the peripheral fundus. If this happens, try to adjust the angle of examination and ensure that you are in line correctly. You should examine all quadrants of the fundus. You should feel comfortable moving around the bed and tilting your body to help your view. You will likely need to keep the eyelid open to maintain your view with your fingers. If the patient struggles to maintain their direction of gaze, you can use a fixation target such as the patient's finger or thumb as shown here. 
With scleral indentation, the BIO can allow visualization of the far periphery of the retina. This technique brings the anterior retina into view. It can be helpful to view the ora serrata and look for peripheral retinal pathology, such as anterior retinal tears that would otherwise be not visible on a regular examination. You will require appropriate anaesthetic drops and an indenting instrument. You should warn the patient that this may be uncomfortable. To perform scleral indentation, position the patient as before. You can indent directly onto the sclera or over the eyelids. Ask the patient to look in the opposite area to be examined. Allow the indenter to rest tangentially against the area to be indented, then ask the patient to look towards the area to be examined and exert a gentle pressure. This example shows the examination of the superior retina being examined. The patient is asked to look downwards towards their feet. The indenter is then placed on the superior eyelid and rolled. Then the patient is asked to look upwards. Only a gentle pressure is required. This is a dynamic examination and the indenter will be moved to observe the peripheral retina. You should thank the patient and give them ample time to recover from the examination before they stand up. Document your findings and inform the patient of your conclusion if appropriate. This completes the BIO fundus examination. It's a challenging practical skill, but with practice you will develop muscle memory to help you maintain a clear view of the fundus. We hope you found this video helpful. Thank you very much for watching.